today is the first day of spring. <laughs> of course not. But I figured that spring actually begins a lot earlier than, you know, the way we measure it. For me, somehow February, beginning of February, end of January is a pretty good time to to pronounce it is actually springtime. I'm a bit silent because all the time I'm looking around, checking things out, and I'm noticing some cars that were not there before. Maybe some voices in the distance. Oh, well, you know what my main concern is? It's the hunters, nothing else. The mission for today that I had in mind is to look for signs of spring. And it's not very hard. The first obvious one is the sunshine and the fact I'm not wearing my jacket in January. I think without any issue I could actually wear a t-shirt. Okay, first one. Second sign of spring. I heard the fly. But I didn't manage to catch it with the camera. Ah, oh, what a shame. Who, who knows where am I going? I hope... I hope I have the internet over here. So far everything is very dried up. As I don't have a very, you know, interesting, let's say, mission. I don't expect much, given the time of the year and everything. This will be very slow paced, yeah, like usual, maybe even more than usual, usual video. So I totally get if you want to tune out, or already did after five seconds. <laughs> That's a human thing to do. Okay, wait. There's a hunter's house. You know, house is one thing. Another thing's thing is are the actual hunters inside. My greatest enemies. Not because some of my thoughts on it and ideologies and stuff, but because they scare me, you know. I'm going in exact paths they are going. So, we tend to not be friends, because I can scare off their prey, and they can scare me. Beautiful view, though. So far, no gunshots. <coughs> Well, hello there. Hawthorn, if I pronounce it. One day I will learn to pronounce everything correctly and I won't have any doubts, but it seems won't happen soon. These are supposed to be picked up during the fall. <clears throat> so you can see they're already pretty gone off by now. You can make very good jams with them, but it's a, as I understood it, it's a bit complicated process for some reason. So I really never bothered. Tea is not bad. I'm not much of a tea drinker, but it's not bad, I guess. You know what would be a very very good idea for idea for chilling. Taking a book with you, taking some lunch, like you would prepare for a picnic or something. And just go inside that little house. Not really a house, a watchtower. You could even sleep there. Wouldn't be the most comfortable thing in the world. But it would be adventurous. It would be pretty. Trying to look on the ground to see anything, but 
particularly of particular interest for today's mission. Not really. Voices again. Hmm. Voice is not in my head. I would say that these dried up branches being the way they are mean a tractor or some kind of vehicle did not really pass too often. I found a sign. Yeah, yeah I know, I should have been looking for a sign of spring and not a random... What this represents anyway, just like... I, I, it's kind of pointing there, I think. So maybe saying, don't go that way, go straight ahead. Huh. Okay. I mean... I'm not that expressive and maybe I don't give up the signals I wish for certain things, but... If something is unclear, then this, this, this thing... This is even worse than me. It's terrible. A field of dried corn. You guessed it, has nothing to do with the sign of spring. Yet another thing that doesn't. So I really love setting up these missions that I'm failing miserably. But I wanted to talk about one detail, as you can see, this is kind of a sinkhole where the corn is planted and throughout history, much of the history, people have been planted stuff in those sinkholes because the soil is better there and the moisture keeps up, obviously, because everything comes down and then just sits there a bit. So in times of drought and there is when there is not too much rain, it comes in handy for your plants. So yeah, nice little detail. Most of the times I'm finding stuff planted inside this. And actually, when you look at properties on the map and who owns them, the property limits are often going around these sinkholes. So this is actually a field that belongs to somebody and a lot of the times it's not the area around the area around belongs to somebody else or to nobody but it's the actual sinkhole that is written down as a property beautiful day really it I could really wear without any issue I could wear a t-shirt Oh look, I think this is some kind of civilization, yeah, ah, a bad one, I'll throw it out. So I'm thinking, I have this question mark, should I go with the wild way or the more civilized way? Yeah, for me this is the civilized part. Hmm. Let's see. I think you already know the answer. Now, well, well, what do we have here? I'm almost certain these are deer tracks. However, these are something else. Dogs, maybe? I don't know how well can you hear, but I'm trying to figure out different birds that I can hear and all the different sounds. So far I got some kind of tit. You know, the tit that makes the sound, <laughs> not the tit like the tits. <laughs> so one time, a uh, fun story, I was uh, 
I was generating an AI image for a bird that's called Great Tit and they almost banned me because of the tit word and now I <laughs> must leave it myself knowing that a system somewhere sometime thought that I was some kind of Great Tits obsessed maniac oh, it's a hard hard thought to have and to die with but I must live with it there's a small sinkhole up front just below the hunter's watchtower so I'm hearing tits, I'm hearing ravens in the distance, I'm hearing jays, all the usual suspects. I'm hearing chickens in the distance, which I assume are not wild. <laughs> I also hear off-road vehicles, because for some reason they tend to drive here. Well, they need to drive somewhere. Don't they? I also hear humans, but I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out where the sounds are coming from. Could be from the next corner, could be on the next planet, as far as I'm concerned. So. I think I made a friend because that bee landed on my palm the moment before. Well, the first sign of spring is something we made friends with. The second one is the poop. Two different kinds of poop. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's next to them. Who knows? Which critter that is? I forgot the word in English, of course. I think I know which one is. it is. <coughs> but, yeah, there it is. Some animals home, next to two different kinds of poop. But maybe it is just the same one after two different meals. I don't know. Never really, really thought about poop that much. But yeah. We have one sign of spring. I wonder what that bee is actually looking for, because I haven't seen a single flower of any kind anywhere. Maybe the bee knows something I don't. Hmm. Okay, keep your secrets. Hmm, maybe this could be potentially a sign of spring. I'm really not sure. But look at this. This is uh, probably downy oak, baby oak. So this, it started growing. Probably it's from this year. Like I'm almost certain because it's so small. <laughs> so cute. There is one issue though that this tree does not necessarily know. It's in the middle of the road. There is no way in hell they are going to let it grow here so what I'm going to do is I am not sure if I'm going to succeed but you guessed it I'm going to try to plant this somewhere else because you know I'm, I have special connection <laughs> to downy oaks for some reason I don't know why I left but they really mean a lot to me and it's very s not something super rare or anything it's just a very special plant for me and I'm going to take it with me I need to find a good way to try you know to just to get through all the details to be sure I will hurt it as less as possible I know the ideal thing is to leave it here, but 
it won't survive. It simply they will simply cut it off. It will never never be able to grow here. So let's try to do something just for the fun of it. And maybe, just maybe, one day I will have a whole video series about this guy and how it grows in my home and some how I'm building the benches below it. Baby oak is collected. <sighs> there are just few issues with this. First issue is I heard the gunshots. Second issue is I need to go to the market to buy some stuff to the supermarket and my hands well look like I've been digging earth with them which I did. So hunters are very likely in the very same forest I am usually in because I seen their cars parked on that spot, particular spot where you turn around and go to the forest. So yeah, they made me divert my usual route, but it's always a good thing, it seems. I always find something different, something else, something surprising, more or less. I didn't find any aliens, but you know what I mean? Those little things you find, some have only meaning to you, others have meaning for all of nature, and that's that. Beautiful things. So, the cornfield from the other side. <laughs> Seems this whole video is about that cornfield. <laughs> so here is a family member that I found randomly in the middle of the road. So far, it lives. I don't know if I damaged the roots too much. We will see how it goes. I hope everything will be fine. This is just very temporary. I need to find, of course, a larger pot, but for now this will do. I was just <laughs> trying to find pretty much anything that will fit. And I found this one that was, um, that was near my doorstep. Uh, I researched a bit what I need to do with the soil. So it needs to be lime-rich soil that dries fast that drains fast. I don't know how I'm go am I going to achieve it. I'm not too knowledgeable in soils and stuff, but I need to research it because I am really I really want to cherish this one. Another tree that I have that I am just keeping for the times that I will have a larger garden, my own garden is a wild cherry. Now the story of that wild cherry is that it got to my raised bed by accident, basically it got there by itself, I think it just rolled down from the hillside and it started growing and one day I just noticed, hmm, is this a tree growing in my raised bed next to my peppers? Yeah, it was a tree and it was a wild, uh, wild cherry. I really love cherry. cherries, especially in the spring, they give these beautiful flowers and I would love to have one. So I saved it and I was very pleased to see it actually has a small uh, bulbs started uh, starting to grow, you know, preparing for the springtime for, for the leaves to come up. It's beautiful to see. It survived. I think that wild cherry will be more resilient than this one because I hurt this one more, you know. I, I basically discarded all the soil it was already in, so it, it increases the stress to the plant. I damaged the roots, I guess, a bit, for sure because I didn't have the tools to do it properly when I took it, but I hope everything will be fine. We will see what will be fine and what not, but now, for now, let's name it. Hmm. When you name something, you will be sad if it dies, but okay, I'm prepared for it. Let's call it Bobby, for some reason. It's simple, it's, it's nice, I guess. That's the first thing that came to my mind. So this is Bobby. If it dies, it will become Bobby the first and I will have Bobby the second or something like that. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have Bobby the 100th and then it will succeed, but okay, never mind. I want to be pessimistic. Everything will be fine. So we will see how it goes. I will record throughout the time, throughout the year, throughout the years, and hopefully it will live.
Well, no, since the fire is on, cat is trying to sleep, I think the day is over. I think it is time to do one experiment. So I was in a supermarket after that boring forest walk. And what I noticed is strawberries. Now, I'm thinking about, hmm, it is the end of January and how likely it is for these strawberries to actually be any good. You will guess it, it is very, very uh, not likely, let's call it like that. And I wanted to prove myself right or wrong, basically. Uh, let's see, let me check the label just one second. This should be from Greece. You know, which makes sense. Greece is a uh, one country. I, I think strawberries can go pretty good there right now. This, this time of the year, maybe in some, I don't know, greenhouse or something. I have no idea. But whatever it is, let's try it and figure it out. I will try it raw without any sugars or anything else. I usually eat those with sugar. But of course, you cannot compare these ones to the ones you find in the forest. And you will never. You never will. You can find the ones that are more or less okay. But <laughs> whoever tasted the wild strawberries you find yourself in the forest knows exactly what am I talking about. But okay, let's talk and more action. Let's try this. I want to apologize to all humans who have ever lived. Was tasting strawberries in January from the supermarket. <laughs> strawberries, of course. Uh, there are so many parameters there that are just red flags that this just won't be right. They are not, you know, inedible or something like that. It's not, um, it's not disgusting or something, anything along those lines. But it is very, like you, you are tasting a cardboard. I compare everything with cardboards for some reason, and I never tried the cardboard, but anyway, uh, it's like tasting the cardboard with just a little bit of, uh, you know, um, that some kind of strawberry flavor, maybe some aroma that, that's added in, in, <laughs> you know, in those small drops or something, artificial ones. Not saying the aromas are artificial, but just comparing to what I can feel, it's, it's like... It's like you're asking yourself while you're eating this, why does this even exist? And it might be go so far that at one moment you are asking yourself, why do you exist? Oh, that's the moment where you need to stop, I guess. <laughs> it will be okay. It will be okay with some sugar. I prepared everything here. There is uh, plain sugar. 